Now how do you kids do this again with thumbnails? Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, can Copilot catch me up with email? Can it? All right, I'm gonna go through a few things on Outlook Mobile because that's how I start my day. That's how I check on what I need to prioritize and, and sort through. And this is what I want to check out and find. What is the experience like on Outlook Mobile for using Copilot Chat to catch up with email? feels very foreign in one sense because we normally just go through our inbox and process messages and swipe to delete or to move or to snooze. But using Copilot Chat, let's see how it does. So you might first of all see that I am already well into my day. Uh, but this is the sort of thing that I go through when I'm thinking about catching up with email that might have arrived over the night and, and during the morning. Um, look, Copilot chat, it's, it's prompt driven here with an Outlook. So um, you can see at the bottom of the screen there, I can tap into Copilot chat and I start off with a new chat. Now, there are some helpful prompts to get me started, but the one that I want to use, and I hope it's still in my clipboard, um, is you know, something that's crafted purposefully to catch me up with the last 10 emails uh, in my inbox, uh, summarize each email, and if there are any requests to action or questions to answer, then list them in a bullet point form after each message summary. Sounds very specific. Not really something that I would you know, come off the top of my head and come up with, um, but it's going to achieve what I'm after. Last 10 emails, quick summary at the bottom to show me what I might need to do if it's detected any action points language. Now let's see how it does. All right, so it does give you some sense of progress and goes through and lists various things there. Um, one thing that I really want to point out here to start with is that it literally is the last 10 emails in my inbox. I am someone who likes to use the focused inbox. Uh, so this means that I've got a focus bit where I can see uh, information that's important to me, people that I frequently contact and, and work with, and then the other view, which is mm, everything else. And I can train that, and I have over time. But Copilot Chat and this prompt, it overrides that. It just goes through and finds the first 10 regardless. It also just looks in my inbox. As we'll see a bit later, it does not go into any subfolders that I might be using with mail rules to get anything sorted. So let's have a look at some of the results there. I am going to ignore some of the promotional emails and we'll look at how we can get rid of those later. So there's the top two. Uh, there is something here which is a notification to say uh, I liked or someone liked my comment on a YouTube video. Very nice. Um, a few other things here. Uh, you can see that uh, as we do work our way through that uh, the subject is highlighted or hyperlinked. Um, let's take a look at this one here from Mark Jones, number 10. Uh, subject is, hi is hyperlinked, it's concatenated, it's shortened, I can see an underline of who it was from, um, and I can see that there is like an annotation number there in terms of the message that it's referring to. And then there's a quick action point at the bottom below that to say this is what I would need to do. And that's going to pick up on the language in the message to say, uh, this is what you should probably try in action. Now, depending on the message, of course, uh, you're going to make your decisions around that. But as a quick way of catching up with the last 10 emails in my mailbox, it's okay. You know, I can use it to prioritize my attention. Um, but I would say that it's not great in terms of uh, having to kind of ignore that promotional stuff that might normally appear in my other view. Of my focused inbox. Well let's take a closer look at some of these hyperlink things and I think the most useful message here is actually Mark Jones's one at the bottom. So what happens when I tap on the uh, hyperlink? Yeah. So it opens up a web browser on my mobile and it'll go through to Outlook Mobile or the Outlook web experience of mobile eventually. Wipe that away there. Try that again. And away we go. 
nope. Okay, trust me, that's what happens normally. But my point here is, as you see it, that it takes me out of Outlook. Not cool. Um, I want to stay in Outlook, keep working through things. In fact, I want to stay in Copilot Chat. And so here's the other, I think, quite a positive thing in this experience. When I actually want to refer to the message that this is sourcing, I'll use the annotation number at the bottom here, the number 10. Tap in on that, I get the full list of messages, and I guess it scrolls me down a little to see number 10. It's within view. Now watch what happens here. This is quite cool. When I tap on the actual message, number 10, it takes me into that full message experience like I would expect in the Outlook mobile app. So it's a familiar experience. I can scroll through and read it and actually take a look at the full message. That's good. And make my decisions about what I need to action or do. Um, I can do a full reply. So I am in that full Outlook experience where I've got my buttons down the bottom of what I want to use for attaching, um, maybe even getting Copilot's help with crafting the message. Uh, that's all good. Uh, and I can go into that full screen experience too if I need a little more room. But let's close that reply. Um, what else can I do? Well, from here, it is that full message experience. I've got to emphasize that again. If I tap those three dots at the top, then I can move it to a different folder. Now this is what you might normally do if you were going just straight into your inbox, ignoring Copilot. You would go in and if you're playing the inbox zero game, you might read it and then file it somewhere. Uh, so that's helpful, that's good. And I can do other actions there like flag and you know, move to focused inbox. It looks like I can still, uh, still do that. So these are good things. And I do like that I can get that full message experience. When I close that, I go straight back to the co-pilot list and I can work my way through. But what I want to make a point of here is that it's still picking up a whole lot of stuff that I'm not really interested in. So what I could do uh, is, let's say, as a follow-up, uh, filter out promotional emails. Okay, so it's going to go over the last 10 emails, filters out promotional emails, that's good, so let's have a look through. It's picking up other things that I've subscribed to, so we kind of still expect that, but it has chopped that down to six messages. What I would have hoped is that it would still grab 10, but ignore the uh, promotional emails. Maybe I need to phrase it a bit differently. But it's nice to know that this is one way to kind of whittle it down and, and clear out other things as well. Like, uh, let's say, uh, filter out, filter out, substack, emails. All right, so that might help to reduce the list a bit more and only show the, the messages that uh, are um, in and around those requirements. So I do think that this is helpful. Okay, we seem to have, uh, <laughs> we seem to, I think that one there from Dan is still a, a Substack email, so this one didn't work quite well. But we are able to use a command like that to, to simplify things. There's something else that I noticed too, that uh, while it's come up with these action points for me at the end of these emails in summary, I can say uh, prioritize the actions and I know in earlier tests and we'll see what it comes up with um, but if it does detect any language in there that is date specific then it's going to order it based on the, the date and so it should come up with a, a list of tasks based on that um, so there's nothing actually in that list based on my conversation of filtering things out that it, it is uh, you know reducing that list yeah, and of course, with uh, everything here in Copilot Chat, if there's something in the list that I want to know a little more about, I do see some uh, suggested prompts there. So there's, are there any urgent actions needed from these emails? So that's another way to summarize this. Uh, but if there was something in there that caught my eye and I still want to just 
pull out some of the detail without opening up the whole message, then I can use a prompt to say, tell me more about. Um, so if I was looking through this, I've got, okay, two messages there with some actions to require. Um, let's say... Uh, tell me more about Seth's... Seth's... Mm, oh, scroll me right back up. Podcast. Whoa. Now I made a spelling mistake there. I, I recently turned off autocorrect to try and reduce the distractions I have as I'm typing things. Uh, let's see if it's made any sense about that. Seth Green hosts a podcast. Those are his last or most recent episodes. Yeah, very cool. So it allows you to drill down into more detail and potentially even ask things that are not in the message that give you a bit more context about uh, that message, the person, perhaps the topic that it's been discussed. So let's return to some of the downsides to this. How much faith do you put in the, the summary that this comes up with, that Copilot comes up with? Now, I still encourage you to read the full message. Just use this quick tell me about the last 10 messages prompt use the response to prioritize your focus but still go in and read the full message even if the summary looks a little benign i think that you know while copilot and large language models are able to te detect and understand language quite well they do make mistakes and you certainly don't want to miss out on um, critical details that are important in the emails and leave it up to copilot we might come up or hear with a, a new modern excuse, uh, like we used to hear, the dog ate my homework. Sorry boss, I missed that message and task because Copilot ate my <laughs> meaning of my message. I don't know. Now I also mentioned about um, Copilot not checking subfolders. Now my prompts, even if I was really casual about it and said, help me catch up with my email, it's going to assume that I'm talking about my inbox folder. And if I'm using subfolders, uh, then it's going to miss some of those messages. One that I prepared earlier, if I can go back over to email here, uh, is, let's go into my inbox, uh, that one there, full folders. And I created a folder, Project Radio, there it is. I have a rule that I set up and any email that comes from Laura and it's about Project Radia uh, is going to be filed into this folder. And when I say check the last 10 emails, it doesn't pick that up because it is a subfolder. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that um, it's going to ignore email that are in subfolders. So if I say uh, what is new from Laura. Well, let's use one of these other fancy features, the, the plus, attach, reference, people. Oh, there's Laura. What's new from Laura about Project Radio? Right, so I'm testing this beforehand. Let's see if it does succeed again. There you go. It does still pick up on items when I'm specific about a person. But if I wanted to just quickly catch up, your mail rules might be filing messages to keep you automatically organized, but you might miss detail based on that. So keep that in mind as well. One thing that I do want to do is be able to reuse this prompt. And it's something that I might want to do daily. Uh, and what I have found is, okay, I could say, uh, run that prompt again. And it is going to remember all of that context. It's going to remember all the filters that I might have applied. Uh, so keep that in mind too. But uh, it is running this initial prompt. It's, it's checking for summaries across the last 10 emails that I received. That's cool. And it seems to come up with the same results. Although I'm not too keen in terms of uh, it not picking up on other things. Let's just compare that back into our inbox. So we'll go back into here and take a quick look. Is it indeed the last 10? Let's have a look. Probably is looking at this now. 
tons of email that has come in and it's all what I would consider other, not priority. So I really do want Copilot to be able to understand what I have deemed to be focused email. You know, as I look at that now, it's not really helping me catch up with the 10 most important emails or, or content that I really am interested in is just looking at the full 10. So here's hoping that uh, it does over time manage to uh, understand that. Now look, the other thing that I'd like is that if I can't easily reuse that prompt, if there is that <laughs> that limit around 30 messages uh, and that it it used to be there, I'm just asking John more if, if it's still in place. Uh, I might actually hit my limit if I keep going back each day and saying, can you rerun that prompt? Can you rerun that prompt? Maybe I use it two or three times a day. And I might hit that limit as you know we have had in the past of not being able to have up to 30 uh, exchanges in a, in a full chat. So what I would be looking for is that if I go into new chat, um, that I can access my prompt library, the prompts that I want to keep using, my saved prompts that I could just access quickly and launch in a new chat. And then I can start that context again. Or I can build on it and say filter out promotional email uh, and as and when needed filter out or focus on certain people, topics and, uh, and messages that I'm interested in. So in short, the question was can Copilot help me catch up with email? Yes, it can. It's different though, right? It's not the traditional going in and using that full experience of swiping and using all the full features of working and managing your inbox. But I do like that it does open up a full message when you use that little annotation or that, that source and allows me to do everything I normally would in a message. And when I need to, I can filter down, I can get more detail as and when needed, having a conversation with Copilot. Just remember though, don't assume anything. Do check things out as you go. Um, don't just assume that the, that the summary is going to be correct. Always go in and check the details. So what has your experience been of using Copilots in, uh, in Outlook, in Outlook Mobile? Are you using it daily to kind of organize your day and drill into the detail? Or are you the old habit opening it up, working through things, playing the inbox zero game and, and just figuring things out the usual way. Let me know if you're using a blend or one or the other. It'd be really interesting to hear your experiences. And let's see what more Copilot can do in future videos. Catch you again soon. Thanks.